this video will demonstrate how to apply um, aerodynamic uh, pressures coming from a flight stream model onto this uh, wing structural model uh, that will be running in OptiStruct later. So uh, before we take care of this model, let's head over to flight stream and extract the data that we need. We have here a uh, wing model, a very simple wing model that I've run um, at zero degree angle of attack, 55 meters per second, um, the free stream velocity and at sea level. So those velocity and, um, and altitude are important later on to calculate the dynamic pressure that we'll use to scale the, the data. So keep, keep these in mind. So the model has run successfully. We'll head over to the analysis tab. And the first thing we'll do is update the result to make sure that the data is accurate. Um, and you'll notice here that I'm showing um, values in Newton instead of coefficients, um, simply because that'll be easier to compare the data to um, what we've applied. So all we need to do here is export the data and we will export a um, FEM CSV, um, which will give us essentially a cloud of point at the centroid of each element of the error model um, with the uh, in this case, pressure coefficient. This is what we're what we're going to export. So um, I like to name my files with uh, what it is that I'm extracting. So I'm extracting CP at an AOA of zero and a free stream velocity of 55 meters per second. Uh, so that would be sufficient. Let's save this. And we have to pick which component we're exporting. So we're exporting on the wing. And I would recommend, in this case, exporting CP reference, um, which is essentially the CP calculated based on the reference free stream velocity. Um, and here we go, which is what we're showing. So that this is done. At this point, we can uh, uh, leave flight stream aside and head over to our structural model. Uh, before we actually apply the pressures, there are a number of things that we need to check. Um, and the main thing being, I want to check the normals of my model to make sure that all the normals are pointing inwards. Um, and, um, you know, that they are consistent, so that later on, the pressure can be um, applied correctly. Um, so this is uh, correct. Now let's apply the pressure. So you'll notice that this mesh, um, if I compare back to my flight stream models, if I go back to the flight stream model and I show the mesh, you'll notice the mesh is very dissimilar to um, the structural mesh that we use here. Of course, we want to use very different meshes for uh, the two applications. So in order to be able to successfully um, apply the pressures, I need to create a field and use the field to distribute this. So I will go ahead and create um, a field. So here, create field. And this field is going to be of the type continuous. It's going to be real and it's going to be based on a CSV file, which I will point out here. So this is the file that we exported. Um, and at this point, that's all I need to do. Then I can head over to the field side. Um, I can always rename field flight stream CP distribution. Um, you can also apply a local system if you need. So if you need to, uh, if your um, um, structural model and your CFD model are not in the same orientation, then you can use a local system to, uh, to apply this. In order to apply the, scheme, the, the field, I will hit right click on the field and hit realize. Um, and now I need to um, select where I apply. So we'll start by selecting the elements we want to apply to. And um, I would suggest you apply, you select them by components. Um, we obviously only want to select the outside pressures um, or the outside surfaces, sorry. Um, whether you apply the, uh, whether you use the trailing edge or not is not, this is not going to make a, a big difference. Um, but do bear in mind if you have a slightly different trailing edge, if you have a thick trailing edge here and you're using a flight stream model with a sharp trailing edge, there may be a few discrepancies here. 
um, but we can check that later. So we check, okay, this validates. So we now have our selected elements. And before we actually apply the, the values, uh, we'll come back to the settings after, we first want to check um, the, um, the cloud points. And you'll notice that, uh, I mean, one of the things that tends to happen is we tend to run flight stream models in um, SI units in meters, but often we will be um, using a structural model in millimeters. So if I hit the review button, uh, what you'll notice is my cloud point in my wing is very tiny and it's, you know, it's here. So the first thing I need to do is transform it and scale it by 1000. So we'll hit the transform and hit scale. We keep it at the origin to make sure that stuff does not move. And it's a uniform scaling of 1000. And as I hit review, you'll notice that now my cloud of points um, wraps around my wing fully. You'll also notice that as much as I was showing a uh, a full wing in the results of uh, the flight stream model, I actually run only, I actually created only half a wing model. Um, and and therefore the results I export, I only export it on half the wing. Um, so that's something to bear in mind if you only do a half model on flight stream and you have a full structural model, um, you'll have to somehow replicate those loads afterwards. Um, so before so that's correct, now we have the correct scaling. Before I hit realize, um, I need to change the interpolation because we um, want to, uh, because we have nodes that are not necessarily located next to the, um, the, the centroid of the elements uh, when we don't have, you know, one, one point in the CFD data by, uh, by structural element. We want to be careful how we interpolate that data um, so that it's as accurate as possible. And I like to use inverse distance weighting, which essentially will um, look at the closest pressures and do uh, 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 interpolation based on inverse distance weighting. Uh, but you can uh, potentially use a linear interpolation as well. Um, and uh, also maybe the shape function proximity might be useful, but I like to use the inverse distance weighting. Um, and I'll use a radius of about uh, 200, um, which gives me plenty of room to find points in, in those areas. So obviously, I recommend uh, making sure you use a radius that's big enough to find more than one data point in a CFD. Um, at this point, bear in mind that we're scaling the coefficient, the pressure coefficient CP, um, not the actual pressure. So you have two options. You can either uh, scale the data at this point and enter as a scale factor, you need to enter the dynamic pressure. Uh, so you can activate this and calculate your dynamic pressure and enter the dynamic pressure here, or you can leave it blank, apply CP, and then later on scale the actual pressure loads, um, the pressure coefficients with a load add card that will allow you to scale that pressure coefficient. There are cases where Either, you know, there are, there are cases where one's better than the other and it, it's highly dependent. If you're going to be using uh, just a generic or a, a rough order of magnitude pressure coefficient that you can scale for different load cases, um, that might be sufficient. Um, and you can keep the CP and scale it later, or you might want to scale it now. So I won't scale it for now. Um, I'll hit realize. And my realization is complete. So before we um, sort of complete this. Let's just look at the contour. And the first thing you want to check is make sure that you have pressure everywhere. Um, so we do have pressure everywhere. And we want to make sure that um, the distribution makes sense. So if I uh, compare this distribution to my flight stream distribution, um, I can see that with the coefficient between minus two and, and one, um, this seems to be reasonable. Um, obviously, this is a visual comparison. And if you wanted to have very accurate data, I would suggest that um, you um, you compare this a lot more fully by doing sample points and, and maybe or even maybe cross sections or things like this. Um, you can also scale these 
to have a more accurate um, value. So that's, this point is correct. Um, and then the next thing that we'll do to validate is um, we'll compare the CP distribution or the force that's generated um, to the forces that, um, that's applied on flight stream. Uh, before we do that, one thing, a few things you need to notice here is I have a cutout for the leading edge and the trailing edge in the root section uh, because this is a structural model. So I know for, for sure for, from the start that I will not have exactly the same values. Um, and if, if you need to have exactly the same values and, and need to be comparing more accurately, it might be worth actually applying, um, you know, have all the surfaces that you have in the CFD model um, matching in the structural model, even if you have to delete some afterwards. Um, so you could fill these with elements or cover the, the surfaces with elements and apply the pressure there and, and validate. Um, so what we'll do is we'll do some uh, very simple calculation. Let's go to the post ribbon and um, apologies to the analyze ribbon and get a load summation of that pressure load. So you'll notice that if I go in my model, if I go in my loads collector, I have a pressure loads um, sort of model uh, collector that's been created. And this is where all my pressures are. Um, I can sum this at the origin in this case, because this is the, uh, the origin here. And it's the same origin in both models. So I can always compare. Um, and if I hit accept, it's calculating and it will apply. It will give me a report shortly of the pressures. So obviously this will be a sum of CP values, which is not, uh, not directly comparable. So we can uh, pair that. We'll let HyperMesh complete the calculation. Well, this is working out. I've um, created just a simple Excel spreadsheet to calculate my um, dynamic uh, pressure. So my density at sea level is 1.225. Um, my velocity was 55 meters per second. And the dynamic pressure by definition is half rho times V square. So that's 1.8, 10 to the 3, 8.5, 10 to the 3 Pascal, which I'm converting into megapascal for um, my um, for my model since I'm working in millimeters. Um, and while we did this, we have a uh, value from um, from hypermesh. So let's just uh, compare these values, um, and we can just do a quick check. Uh, in this case, we'll do a quick check with the um, FZ which will be equivalent to our FZ in flight stream. So if I head back to my spreadsheet, this is my initial value, which I'll multiply by my dynamic pressure. And obviously I need to multiply this by two because I only have half a wing and flight stream gives me the full wing. So this is 24,742 newtons, which if I head over to flight stream, uh, flight stream gives me a slightly higher value of 25,932, uh, which right now I explain by the uh, differences in, um, in, um, you know, in the, in the cutout regions. Uh, but like I said, further, um, further analysis is required, but this seems to be at least in the right ballpark, which means the pressure distribution has been applied as, as closely as, as we could. Um, Hopefully this helps, um, and we can uh, well, we can expand in later videos.